Hey students, this is Professor Gore, and uh, this is uh, a pretty heavy topic that uh, is covered in both my U.S. History 2 and my World History 2 classes, and that is the Holocaust. And the uh, I think it's important, even though it, it's really a world issue, uh, world history thing, it does affect U.S. history, um, particularly as, as the United States admits um, Jews that, that eventually escaped the Holocaust, although uh, because of the immigration quotas and so forth from the 1920s, um, you have a lot of Jews that try to immigrate that weren't able to do so, such as even Anne Frank's uh, family. Her dad tried to get uh, a visa to get into the U.S., but because of the Emergency Quota Act of 1921 and the Immigration Act of 1924, uh, doesn't um, that's not able to get happen. I also recently watched a, um, a documentary from PBS, American Experience, talking about the eugenics movement. Actually, the eugenics, actually, uh, people actually convinced uh, Congress to pass um, the immigration restriction to try to limit the immigrants coming from Southern Eastern Europe and so forth. Um, so this is going to be a heavy topic. And uh, um, so just prepare yourself. I don't try to show a, a lot of graphic images. Um, the reason being several years ago, I attended a, a teacher training um, on the Holocaust uh, at the Ackerman Center for Holocaust Studies, actually at University of Texas at Dallas. And they recommended that you just don't show a bunch of graphic images from the Holocaust. And there's a bunch uh, because it kind of desensitizes people to it. Um, and it doesn't have as much weight like the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. Um, has a, um, a display of all this hair uh, to help you understand um, the amount of people that were uh, head shaved and so forth at some of these camps. Uh, it shows shoes, uh, shows all the spectacles that they um, got from um, the Jews that they had captured and so forth. So it kind of makes it a much uh, weightier um, thing looking at that instead of just a bunch of graphic images. And of course, I know that the Nazi symbol on this, this picture of Hitler is, is messed up, but um, Hitler and uh, uh, those that supported him within the upper ranks of the Nazi party had claimed for centuries that the Aryan race was superior to the Middle Eastern um, people, the Semites, Jews and Arabs. And so typically today, when you say that you're anti-Semitic, uh, you're anti-Jewish. Um, and one of the things uh, that, that's interesting that I, I learned from watching this eugenics crusade documentary is that uh, the Germans who implemented um, eugenics, uh, actually by extermination, but uh, uh, the United States never did that, but there were some sterilization movements in the 1930s, um, is the Germans and others thought, uh, well, at least the, the Nazis thought, um, that the Aryan race was uh, more evolved and so forth than other races. And so in order to create a perfect race, they only need to reproduce with themselves and then prevent the other groups from reproducing. And so eventually to kind of create in their minds a super race um, and so forth. But what is the term, the Holocaust? Um, it's a reference to the murder of about 6 million Jews. And there was also, um, it's a, between 5 and 6 million non-Jews that were killed and what that uh, group is, it would be homosexuals, um, uh, gypsies, um, other Polish uh, people, particularly uh, Hitler did not like the Slavic um, uh, ethnic groups, and that's most of Eastern Europe. Um, also mentally and physically disabled. And uh, they also um, had some of the elderly uh, ex uh, euthanized as well. So, um, but what ends, what ends up happening is Hitler seizes power in 1932-1933 uh, 1933 after Hindenburg dies. And at that point, the Nazis don't, don't just pass a bunch of really harsh laws all at once. But what they do is they pass laws year after year after year that gives the state greater control. And it also gives them the legal right to persecute um, Jewish businesses and Jewish people more so than they had uh, in the year before. And so... Uh, they kind of, uh, over time, over the course of four or five years, gave themselves absolute power to kind of do as they wish. And as they kind of created this military type government, um, they they began implementing these things, particularly when, when World War II begins, and especially when uh, the Nazis invade uh, Eastern Europe um, as they um, begin having these mass murders done and so forth. So one of the, the big th one of the big things that develops is what's called the Nuremberg Laws of 1935. Um, it, it removes all German citizenship uh, from Jews. If you got if you remember from World War One, um, Germany had been propagandized. They were winning the war the whole time, and so when they found out they lost, 
Um, they're frustrated. The economy is in shambles by the early 1920s. Um, they're looking for scapegoats and so forth. And um, because of, of really racism and prejudice and this anti-Semitism, um, the Jews are, are the, one of the largest groups that are blamed for um, everything. And the Nazis particularly blamed all on them uh, and so forth. And so uh, this is actually an Aryan guy. It's actually not even a Jewish person that is, is getting his nose measured to see if um, he was, uh, how Aryan he was. And this is something that, that um, these traits and so forth were, were, were started actually from the eugenics movement uh, that began in the early 1900s, uh, both in, in Western Europe and the United States and so forth. Now, the United States wasn't doing anything like, like this, uh, but they were trying to figure out different they were trying to track hereditary traits in the U.S. is really what they were trying to do. Um, so you start seeing more and more Nazi propaganda against Jews, um, even in, in children's books uh, and so forth. And as um, the Nazis kind of infiltrated the school system, they taught uh, this hate rhetoric against uh, Jewish uh, children. And they even had them come to the front of the class and publicly shame them and so forth. And the propaganda poster on the right is saying the Jews are trying to take your money and they're also communists. OK, um, also um, more and more Jewish business owners keep having their their property vandalized and then the German police not actually find out who did it. Um, you also had uh, the call for boycott of German Jewish businesses. And this is why um, a lot of German Jews try to get out of Germany to uh, uh, immigrate elsewhere. OK, you can see this is where Jewish children are, are humiliated and expelled. Um, they began trying to figure out how much of a Jewish person you were um, and so forth. And this is kind of this eugenics uh, side of it, trying to control um, who was reproducing and so forth. So if, if you had at least three Jewish grandparents, regardless if you were Christian, then you're Jewish. If you had two Jewish grandparents and practiced uh, Judaism, you're also Jewish. Um, so if you had one Jewish grandparent and weren't practicing Judaism, then you were probably okay. But it's ridiculous how they were trying to figure that stuff out. Um, Jews within Germany had to carry around these different ID cards um, uh, all of the Jewish, um, uh, German men had to change their middle name to Israel. So that way they, they would know for sure they were Jewish. And then women changed their middle name to Sarah, uh, to show that they were Jewish. They also had to wear these yellow star, uh, yellow, uh, kind of stars of David on their clothing. You see this also as the Nazis invade, uh, other Eastern European countries when they invade the Soviet Union with Operation Barbarossa. And, uh, so, also, the Hitler used um, the Gestapo, which was prominent at uh, rounding up Jews across, uh, particularly Central and Western Europe. The Einsingruben are the ones who are going to track down a lot of the Jews in Eastern Europe, but the Gestapo are going to be a lot of the ones that, that uh, uh, track down the Jews in Central and Western Europe um, and so forth. Now, the SS, uh, who are often portrayed ruthlessly in movies and, and for right, rightful reasons. Um, they're the ones that are staunchly loyal to Hitler, and they're the ones who are going to guard the concentration camps um, and um, are going to uh, uh, the work camps and also the death camps. And there's a difference between the, the work camps and the death camps um, and so forth. Now, the first group that gets targeted by the Nazis are the um, – um, mentally and physically disabled, they began exterminating them through uh, kind of carbon monoxide, uh, uh, these mobile carbon monoxide vans. And but there was ends up being outrage with, among the German uh, people. So they stopped doing that in 1941. Uh, but you don't see that outrage of, of other groups. But the the, the groups that, that, that particularly the SS targeted are gypsies. Um, but, uh, obviously, we know about Jewish people are the largest homosexuals, Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah's Witnesses religiously didn't uh, uh, believe it was right to serve in the military, and that's why they're targeted. Also, the homeless um, and mentally and physically disabled individuals or what they called a, a feeble mind. Um, now, here's where things get um, really bad and where the German Jews realize that they need to try to officially get out of the country, and it's called Kristallnacht. It means neither broken glass. There was, in France, um, a German individual, uh, government official that was supposedly killed by a French Jewish person. Really, it's just looking for an excuse. Um, and the, it kind of ignites this, this hatred. And um, that, that night, all these German um, 
Jewish businesses are destroyed and synagogues are burned and so forth. Um, for instance, if you've, uh, if you've ever read the book Unbroken about Louis Zambrini, he talks about when he goes to the 1936 Berlin Olympics, he knows when Jewish people start to stand up and cheer, these other Germans would shove them down and would prevent them from standing up and cheering for like German athletes and so forth. He was kind of confused by that. Of course, they didn't know exactly what was happening in 1936 uh, in Germany. Okay. Um, and so a lot of German Jews tried to escape um, to other countries. A lot of other countries didn't want to let them in. And um, what ends up happening is if the ones who were able to leave, like uh, Albert Einstein was able to leave early in the 1930s, um, they were forced to give up all of their wealth to get out. Um, after Kristallnacht, you end up having all of the Jew German Jews arrested and they were sent to, uh, to labor camps. Now, death camps will come after the Wannsee Conference, but uh, the German Jews were originally sent to labor camps. Do you look at the Jewish population in Europe about 1933? Obviously, this is uh, um, estimated. Okay, and I'm going to show another statistic later of the percentage of the Jews, uh, Jewish population that gets killed by the Nazis and so forth. So um, what ends up happening is when the Germans invade Eastern Europe. Um, Eastern Europe was known for religious persecution against Jewish people for um, decades. In fact, that's why so many um, Jewish people migrate from Eastern uh, and Southern Europe, particularly from Russia and Poland and other places, uh, what, what, was, uh, what, what, is, what becomes Ukraine and others. Um, and they migrate in very large numbers to the United States in the late terms, early 1900s. And so that's why you see lots of Jews, uh, Jewish Americans in New York, um, and other Midwestern cities, a lot of Russian um, Jewish uh, Americans end up moving to uh, the Dakotas and farm with the Homestead Act. Um, and they migrate to other parts um, of the country. Uh, Dallas, uh, Fort Worth has a fairly large Jewish population uh, in the country as well. So um, but what happens when the, the Nazi army invades uh, the Soviet Union with Operation Barbarossa um, in 1941? As they drive the Soviets back behind their, the front, um, Hitler has a couple different groups, particularly led by uh, Heinrich Himmler is the one calling the shots. They began um, sending out um, four groups of the Einsengruben, uh, Einsengruben A, B, C, and D, and they go to different parts of Eastern Europe, and their job is to uh, round up the Jews and exterminate them. Um, one of the things that they did, they, um, they do mass kill a bunch, but in larger cities, it was, it was, the population was so concentrated, particularly in Warsaw, which is a very large Jewish city, uh, and Kiev, Ukraine as well. They put them into these ghettos where they would wall them off, um, and it was about two million or so um, that end up um, getting pushed there. Some were executed and so forth, and um, it, it's just like a couple square miles um, and it's only like 3% of the size of the city. About 400,000 Jews were, were walled off and there were others were killed uh, and so forth. And the Warsaw Ghetto had rampant starvation and so forth. There is some resistance there. There is a Warsaw Ghetto uprising, uh, but the Nazis are able to put it down. And you have massive disease and poor sanitation and so forth that happens. Now, uh, this right here is... Um, in Eastern Europe is where the uh, largest amounts of Jews are killed. Really, when we, when we think of the, the gas chambers and so forth, that's the Jews of Western Europe and Central Europe. They're primarily sent there. And so what the Einsengruben did is they recruited locals. Um, so you had Ukrainians, you had Lithuanians, um, you had Romanians that uh, they would, would have, they would supervise everything, but they would round up the uh, local Jews and their populations, a lot of times they were beaten. I've seen video footage of it because the Germans were capturing it on film and, and uh, 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 pictures. And what they would do is, is they would um, uh, find these natural ravines or they would dig these big, um, big, huge kind of ravines in, in the landscape. Um, and they were try to, to make killing as efficient as possible. And so what they would do is they would primarily, now this picture they're not, but they would um, have them stripped naked so they could um, keep any kind of clothing or valuables. And then they would uh, have them um, lay down. And then um, the local uh, Lithuanians or Ukrainians or Romanians or whoever would end up shooting them. They would be two bullets uh, per person. Um, and then they would have the next group line up and then they would stack them on top of each other and so forth. So 
uh, try to bury, put as many um, people into one area. This one, uh, this one, the part that one of the biggest mass killing area was, was what's called Baba Yar in Ukraine and it had 33,000 Jewish people. They were, they were murdering thousands every single day. Okay. Let that sink in for a moment. Uh, and, and, and the, the Germans usually would come in after the, um, Ukrainians or Lithuanians or Romanians or whoever it was uh, in Eastern Europe, and they would um, try to shoot anybody else um, who remained alive. But it would be the locals who would who would shoot. Um, why would they do this? Well, um, they were given better rations, um, and it, it, they got special privileges from the Nazis and so forth. Um, and you have racism and prejudice as well. And so these are some of the ravines and so forth, and they would. Um, Kind of have them line up on one after the other and so forth. Uh, children and uh, women were not immune to this. Uh, women, women would oftentimes, uh, what would um, I've, I've seen one person in a documentary get interviewed where um, they would primarily shoot the mother who was holding their infant first. So that way they have to watch their children getting killed. Then they would shoot the child. Um, and let uh, anyway, it's just. So inhumane, it's, um, it's hard. You can't even really effectively describe it. And you can see right here, here's the percentage in each of these countries of the Jewish population that is slaughtered um, by the Nazis. Now, you notice that it's a lower percentage in the Soviet Union because they didn't capture all the Soviet Union, but they do um, kill a very, very large uh, percentage. You look, 85 percent Lithuania. Uh, and so forth. Now, Ukraine's not on there because it was an independent country, but it, it does um, become an independent country later with the collapse of the Soviet Union. And it's really the, of that Soviet Union told a lot of them are Ukrainian. And really, the, the, the Nazis in Eastern Europe would not have been able to, to get their hands on as many Jews if local populations did not turn them over. Now, um, Hitler knew that there would be all this outcry in Western Europe um, if they um, try to do the same thing they had done in Eastern Europe. In Eastern Europe, they tried to do it in secluded areas and there was a lot more forests. Uh, they did it in areas. Now, there was locals who were able to uh, witness it, but they tried to keep them away from it because they were trying to hide what they were doing. Um, but in January of 1942, the, after they had massacred so many Jews in Eastern Europe in 1941, at the beginning of 1942, um, top, ranking, top ranking Nazi officials met and decided that they were going to construct death camps to kill as many Jews as possible. Now, the reason why they decided the death camps um, is because they were noticing that Einsengruppen leaders and other Einsengruppen um, soldiers were having tremendous problems mentally. Even these, these ruthless killers were, um, in fact, out of the leader, out of the four groups of Einsengruppen, A, B, C, and D, um, three of the leaders have to go back to Berlin uh, to be treated for depression and other mental problems. Uh, this, the German soldiers were constantly trying to find ways of getting out of these killings. There were um, two, two things would either come of them. They would either become raging alcoholics, like they would consume vast amounts of alcohol to numb their uh, pain, and they almost all of them became alcoholics. Or they would become like uh, what's called uh, Satanist or whatever they should uh, uh, find great thrill enjoying and enjoying and killing people, uh, and, and, and so forth. And, um, so that's what their solution was for the Jews of, of Germany and, uh, Western Europe and so forth. So, um, there was underground resistance. In fact, in Belarus, uh, Belarus, and, and, and part of the Soviet Union, you had Jews that fought from the woods and would use guerrilla war tactics against the Germans and so forth. Um, and as I mentioned, the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising was the most popular one. Um, and so there's already were concentration camps for the German Jews and other groups like in Austria. Um, but they began building these death camps. And the reason why they did this, they wanted to make it as impersonal as possible. So that way it wouldn't have all the psychological effect on the German SS soldiers. Now, it wasn't just the Einsengruppen who would supervise this in Eastern Europe. You did have um, one dismounted cavalry unit and um, um, some one SS unit. And then I think that was maybe one other. They did have some normal German soldiers. One top ranking um, Nazi official wanted uh, every German soldier to have killed at least one Jew. So they were all part of this massive crime and to make sure they were following orders. Uh, Auschwitz and, and Majdanek 
were the largest of the death camps. Now, Auschwitz um, is the work camp, and then just a mile away is Birkenau, was actually where the uh, all the, the gas chambers were. But uh, I've had a former student who has been to both uh, and so forth. So you look right here. <clears throat> Here's the concentration camps. Those are the work camps where a lot of them were worked to death. Sometimes they were shot and so forth. Uh, but the red ones are the death camps. And you notice they put all of them in Poland, away from the German people and also out in the woods, which Poland was a lot more rural at that time and so forth. Now, eventually the Soviet Union is the one who's going to liberate those camps because they're going to liberate Poland in um, 1945. This is a picture of a, of a French uh, uh, Jewish family, uh, or sorry, so 16 of the 44 children taken from a French children's home. Only one survived. And um, this is at a group of children at a concentration camp. Um, and so this is part of a stockpile of Zyklon B uh, found at Maidanic camp after the war ended. But really before they, they uh, began using the massive gas chambers, they tried to do these mobile gas vans where they would uh, put you like in like a holding van in the back and be sealed off. And then they would, they would have these uh, tubes they were pulling carbon dioxide from the engine uh, that would be pouring into the van and eventually would kill you that way. But it took, it did take a lot of psychological effect on the German soldiers who were doing that. That's why they, they uh, created the massive gas chambers that you see uh, portrayed in movies and the death camps. Um, now, one of the things that begins happening um, after the tide is turned, uh, in 1943, after the Germans lost to Stalingrad, and particularly when their summer offensive failed at Kursk, the Nazis feared that um, their, their mass murder of well over a million Jews of Eastern Europe might be discovered. If they ever need to sue for peace, they want to destroy the evidence. So in 1943, um, all these massive graves throughout Eastern Europe, the um, Nazis began ordering to be dug up. Now, this is a, a can of Zyklon B, by the way, and this is what a a gas chamber looks like. Uh, my wife has uh, been to a concentration camp in Germany when she was in college. And um, um, yeah, my wife is, uh, she said she gets very emotional when she's talking about it. And they would primarily trans transport people to the rail cars. Now, but back to what I was saying about Eastern Europe, um, in 1943, they began ordering um, uh, Russian or Soviet POWs to um, pick up uh, or actually go to these mass graves and dig up all the dead bodies and burn them and crush all the bones to destroy all of the evidence. They were trying to uh, uh, basically hide what they had done. Now you can see from these pictures, all of these uh, people that go to these uh, concentration camps are all tattooed with a number on them. All had to wear these same kind of prisoner uniforms. These are bags of uh, shaven hair, from women at Auschwitz who you, they used to make felt yarn before they were uh, um, able to do that. And these are all the gold rings and so forth that were taken from the victims at Buchenwald. Um, and so this is actually a picture of at Bye Bye Yar where um, all these Soviet POWs are forced to ex exhume the bodies, which is dig them up. And uh, then they had to mass burn them. And so uh, I've, I've seen a couple of locals interviewed on the documentary and they talked about the stench uh, not only of the you know decomposed bodies, but also the, the burning, and it was constant smoke and so forth. And uh, the Nazis were trying to cover up the evidence of what they had done, uh, but they took pictures of all of this. Now, one of the the most evil people that's ever walked the face of this planet is a guy named Dr. Joseph Mengele, um, who uh, was German. He joins uh, the Nazi uh, ranks in um, during the war. And he was at uh, one of the concentration camps and did all of these uh, horrific scientific experiments. There was other doctors that did some of these things as well. Um, like they would leave uh, infants out in the cold to see how long they would last out in the elements before they died to have scientific um, uh, data on that. Um, this guy particularly would do all of these horrible, um, horrible experiments to twins. Um, he would try to um, amputate like an arm and see if he could uh, attach it to another, the twin or something. Um, all of this was done without anesthesia or pain medication. Um, they, he would also kind of uh, tack uh, these eyeballs of these children after they had died onto this wall. Um, sadistic, um, 
horrible individual. Um, anyway, I don't want to, you, you can find out more information about this guy. Unfortunately, he's, he is able to escape and is not brought to justice. Now, uh, one of the top Nazi officials was part of the Holocaust. Um, uh, Adolf Eichmann is captured by a Zionist group and brought to trial in 1961 and he's executed. Uh, this is uh, one of the scenes. Uh, I choose images that you can't really see as much because of the uh, the nature of the photograph. But um, this was a scene uh, done in Eastern Europe um, and so forth. Um, now, what ends up liberating um, these people held in these camps? Now, by the way, um, in Romania particularly, like uh, they started killing um, gypsy uh, women and children. And the reason why is the men were off fighting uh, in the army and so forth and weren't, um, weren't there to defend their families. Um, same thing with a lot of the, the, the Jewish men, um, uh, in parts of the Soviet Union, they were fighting in the Soviet army. And so they were attacking defenseless people, but the Soviets liberate most of the concentration camps just because a lot of them were in, and the death camps were in the Eastern part of Russia into Poland. Um, uh, but the, out, the allies of the British, the French and the Americans liberate some on the Western part of Germany and other parts of Europe. Now, this is uh, uh, one of the things that you'll see is there is the thing called the Nuremberg Trials, where there were 24 top Nazi officials um, who were brought to trial for these mass crimes. Uh, Twelve received death sentences. The rest were given life sentences, and they their defense was we were just following orders. Uh, what I, I would like to, to bring up, one of the Eitzen group and leaders um, somehow escaped being brought to trial in the Nuremberg Trials, but he suffered from such depression uh, from what he had done that in the early 1950s, he turns himself in um, to the country of Germany for his crimes and he actually dies in prison and so forth. Now, remember uh, in the World War II lecture, I talked about there was also the Tokyo trials for Japanese officials using um, uh, killing and starving, uh, murdering uh, allied POWs and also uh, using chemical, chemical weapon agents testing out on Chinese civilians as well. Um, and so this is one of the most, uh, probably the most horrific uh, episode of the 20th century.